global effort against the Islamic State. I am joined by energy and oil analyst Antonia Yuhas from San Francisco. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. I guess let me start off with this. The U.S. was successful when we took away the money from al-Qaeda, but this seems to be very different, and whatever we're doing, it doesn't seem to be working yet. Well, thank you for having me. Um, yes, Islamic State is dramatically different from other terrorist groups that the United States have faced, and the reason is in the name. They're trying to create a state. If you want to create a state in the Middle East, how do you do that? You go after oil and you go after land, and Islamic State has been doing both and doing so very successfully, um, initially taking fields in Syria, fields that actually previously had belonged to Total and Shell, um, major oil companies, and then moving over into Iraq and taking another approximately seven fields in Iraq, also controlling small refineries, and um, estimates of at the high point of how much they were making were as high as $3 million a day, and doing that through financial streams that are quite different from uh, those that were used by al-Qaeda, as you say, which were primarily large financial donors from Saudi Arabia. This is um, oil money, local oil money. You said $3 million a day at its height. I've heard numbers between one and two more recently. Nonetheless, somebody's buying this oil, and somebody has to obviously pay for it, and that money has to come back. So let me start with the oil first. How do you siphon away a million dollars or two million dollars worth of oil every single day and not have it get noticed or stopped? Well, that's um, the interesting part about um, Under Secretary David Cohn's speech today. It was very welcoming to hear that the Treasury Department is targeting these networks. And as he said, these are age old networks. So essentially, what Islamic State has done is taken over fields that were already active and just it's now collecting the money instead of the bodies that were previously collecting the money through these um, ancient smuggling networks. You know, some of this oil is literally moving on donkeys, it's moving on trucks, it's moving on barges. Okay, and so now it's not, it's not in pipes as probably we, we think in our head when we see giant oil fields. It's, it's very different. I think that's important for the audience uh, to realize. Now, what about the money? Because if they're selling the oil, that means there's the big deposits, one, two million dollars a day, going into some sort of bank account, unless you're going to tell me that it's cash? It's definitely cash, but it, it eventually is ending up in somebody's bank account. And so what was worrisome about um, uh, Secretary Cohn's speech today is that what the United States has really done is put the stick in front of the carrot in some ways. It, it did finally start to target this oil network, which I've been talking about on this show for some time and others have been talking about since it began for many months. Um, and it did that through the bombing campaign, so bombing convoys, um, bombing these small refineries that Islamic State is using, but only now coming around to what seems like the much more logical tact and the one that would um, buy us more allies in the neighborhood, which is to work through these smuggling networks and to go after the money, go after the bank accounts, um, just target these networks, what I would argue, which would yeah. be a preferable way of doing it, would be through more police actions, well, finance actions, and less through bombing actions. Before the bombing began, the controversy started well before that because the President of the United States said that there would be no ground troops, essentially, into this region, into this particular conflict. Now, I guess my question to you is, are ground troops or ground folks needed on the ground to stop this smuggling? Because I don't see how just bombing alone is going to stop smuggling. Certainly not American troops, uh, certainly not foreign troops. That's not at all what's necessary. Again, these are old smuggling networks, it's very easy for the Turks, for the Kurds, for the Syrians to identify these um, flows of oil, where the donkeys are moving, where the barges are moving. The Americans can come in and look at the bank accounts, can look at the funding streams. As um, Secretary Cohn said today, you know, use sanctions against the, the places where the money ends up, the banks where it ends up, the people who are profiting off of this terrorism and use local forces to stop it. And I think it's very easy to do. Um, the bombing campaign has created a, um, you know, a, a large stop in some of this money. It's unclear how much. But that's not a long-term campaign to win hearts and minds or allow for stability to exist after the bombing campaign is over and ideally after Islamic State is out of there. What we need is local on the ground, economic, financial, police actions that have a much 
um, more calming effect and a lasting effect. And I really don't think that the, the stick before the carrot is the way to continue to proceed um, with targeting this very targetable, very huge funding stream. Energy and oil analyst Antonia Juhas uh, joining us from San Francisco. Uh, thank you very much for explaining this very complicated situation uh, for us.